Hello, I'm John O'Neill and you're very welcome to our first video on podcasting brought to you by the Bluebell Arts Project. So who am I? Well, as I said, I'm John O'Neill. I spent about whoa, 26 years working as a producer in radio and television and most of that time I worked in radio so my background is in making uh, spoken word programs if you like. Now, you may have heard the term podcasting before and you thought, well, it's some new fangled expensive idea that involves buying loads of equipment. Um, it's not, but depending on how far you want to take it, it is possible to spend a serious amount of money on equipment and software. But in this short series of videos, I'm going to keep it as simple and as inexpensive as possible and hopefully as accessible to you and people of all ages. And of course there's a lot of equipment available that you can use for free at the Bluebell Arts Project in the Gas Yard Centre, uh, but that'll be when it reopens to the public, as we're all in lockdown at the minute. So in the meantime, I'll talk a little bit about what a podcast is. Now, put simply, a podcast is any edited audio content that you put on the internet. Now, it could be a radio program, or just a unique piece of content on a very specific theme, such as you talking about what life's like for you during this lockdown period. Or maybe you could share your interest in, say, local history. There might be somebody in your street who became famous. We'd like to hear all about that. And you could interview the neighbours for backup information, and we could hear their memories, and of course if there's any juicy stories, you know. Anyway, Basically, you can make a podcast out of anything. So you're going to need some basic equipment. First, you need something to record your voice on. Now, because everything will be edited these days, uh, you need a computer. So you'll need to have some sort of digital device to record on. Now, of course, software for computers and the computers and the recording devices come in all shapes and sizes and prices. Now, unless you can record your whole podcast flawlessly in one go, you're going to need to edit it. So for this, you are going to need a laptop or a PC with some simple audio editing software. Now, just let me remind you that so far we know what a podcast is. We know we'll need some sort of basic recording and editing equipment, but don't let that put you off. Because all of this equipment, as I said, is available at the Bluebell Arts Project in the gas yard and, you know, there'll always be someone there to help you to use it. I did say that you could make a podcast out of anything. Well, that's true. What I mean is you can make a podcast on any subject that you want. Because there's no use yammering on and on about everything under the sun. Oh, that's not a good idea. You'll need to choose your subject. Preferably one that you know something about. Now, you don't have to be an expert. You might have a reasonable knowledge of something, but you need to put in some more facts. And that's why we have libraries and the internet. So you can make sure that you know what you're talking about. There are also books everywhere if you need to look up information. The important thing is to write yourself a little script so that you can follow the script and that you know what you're talking about because it's really important that the person who's listening to you on the podcast believes that you do know what you're talking about and it's important that your podcast is informative you've got the facts right it should be educational as well in other words those of us who are listening to your podcast we should learn something new and don't hold back on your own personality either because because the whole thing should be entertaining but if you're thinking about throwing in a joke, make sure you try it out first. Now let me tell you about something that broadcasters are really afraid of. It's a thing we call dead air. So when you're making a podcast, you don't want big long pauses. Always try to keep your show moving along. In other words, once you've made a point, move on to the next one. It's like telling a story. You need a beginning, 
you need a middle, you need an end, and it should all flow along nicely. If you need any pointers on writing scripts, or just writing, Abby Oliveira has a really good series for creative writers, also on our podcast channel. Blue Bell Arts, we've, we've got it all. So there's good tips in there as well if you're going to write, because when you're doing a podcast, it is a story that people are going to be listening to. When you're speaking, as you're recording, slow your voice down a bit, because you never know where a person might be listening to your podcast. It's a big world out there. And if you remember all the carry on about the Dairy Girls TV series and whether they should have subtitles, this is what we're up against. So slowing down a bit always helps because you really have no idea of where people might be listening, to be honest. Now, some people might also have a little hearing problem. So there is a good reason for slowing down the pace. You don't have to go dead slow, but just so that everybody can clearly understand everything you say. And also, uh, you need to explain yourself at the very beginning of your podcast. In other words, who are you? Where are you? And tell us a little bit about the background, the place you're in. This is very important because many years ago, uh, a woman from the World Service asked me where I was going for a weekend. And I said I was going to Sligo to the William Butler Yeats Festival. Lovely, she said. Would you do a piece for us for the World Service on your weekend and what went on? So I dutifully made my piece, it was about five minutes or something like that, and I gave it to her and then she phoned me up and I was all pleased and she said, yes, it's very good, but I need you to do the beginning again. And I said, what's wrong with it? And she said, well, where is Sligo and who the hell is William Butler Yeats? So I said, well, sure, everybody knows where Sligo is and who William Butler Yeats is. And she says, really? Not if you live in Suriname, darling." Now, you might might think that was cheeky, but it's a very valuable lesson because you don't know who. Somebody in Texas could be listening to you talking about dairy and not have a clue what you're on about. So that's that's an important little one that you should take with you all the time. Everything needs to be clearly explained at the beginning. It's a valuable lesson. So let's take a look at what you're going to need in terms of equipment. So first, let's look at things to record on. Here are some examples of digital recording devices. They're called devices because they're not microphones. Now, some of these will generally start around 80 pounds and upwards. The advantages are that they will record and store your audio on a digital format, and you can load the file directly into a computer for editing, or you can transfer the cards. Here's a couple of ways that you can load your sound files into a computer. I've actually got a machine here and inside this machine, this is the one I'm recording the audio on, and inside this gadget there is what we call an SD card. You'll see it inside there. It's just a little card. I can't take it out now because it's actually working, but I'll show you later. Uh, And you can take that out, plug it into a computer and just transfer the files that way or lots of machinery. If you buy one of the various Tascam type machines or a Zoom recorder, you'll get loads of these with it, said he reaching into his equipment pile which is everywhere. Uh, You get lots and lots of different types of USBs which help. You can just plug into your recorder and transfer the file directly to your laptop or your PC. You can of course record directly into your laptop or PC, but I wouldn't recommend the built-in microphone on a laptop. So you should try and get a USB mic for that job. Now, you can use a microphone plug directly into your PC, either through a digital interface, which is a little box with a preamp in it, and which converts it to digital, or a mixer. And of course, if you don't have all that equipment, what's the simplest thing you can use? Well, that's easy. You can make a podcast all in one go in your phone. Who'd have thunk? It's so easy nowadays. And you can even edit the sound in the phone, although it's a bit awkward and fiddly. Better on a computer, that's my view. So once you've recorded your podcast, now you have a sound file that you've created on your either your device or in your computer, and you can start moving it about. Well, that's about all for the first video uh, in this series. 
Uh, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about how to record and how to transfer your sound files onto the appropriate piece of equipment for editing. Now, in the meantime, I want you to think about a subject that you'd like to make a podcast about, and we'll look into that. So if you have any questions or any comments, you can send them to this address, and I'll answer them for you. Okay, well, that's it from this first part of the Bluebell Arts Project podcasting video. Bye for now.